So these are all the different elevators. The small straight called a 301, the larger straight a 304, a root tip pick, another root tip pick, and the east and west elevators. We're going to go through each of these, their use uh, for different purposes on extractions. The two straight elevators, the 301 and the 304, are used for extraction of teeth and roots. The flat side of the elevator goes against the tooth to be extracted, in this case a number 17. The instrument is applied perpendicular to the arch, so not too steep, but perpendicular to the arch and rotational force is applied. In this case, the rotational force is counterclockwise, which will have an extracting force on the tooth. If the wrong rotational movement, in this case the clockwise rotation is used, the crown will fracture off. The use of the smaller and larger straight elevator, the 301 the small and the 304 the large, depends on the amount of space in the area. Sometimes the small elevator can be used initially and when you get a little bit of mobility in the tooth you can change to the larger elevator to uh, apply the force on the tooth. And again in this case a counterclockwise rotation will bring this tooth out. The straight elevators can also be used for root tips where the same force can be applied but also using the elevator like a shovel so placing the elevator between the bone and the root tip and using the elevator more in a shoveling movement to sort of dig the root out of the bone. These are the root tip picks. This one is called a 1314 and it has mirrored ends to be used in different anatomical situations and the root tip pick 1. They both are used when root tips are fractured during extraction and need to come out through the socket. They are mostly useful when the tooth was mobile before the root broke. If the root breaks immediately upon uh, applying force with the forceps, these root tip picks are rarely useful. Often additional bone must be removed and then these instruments may come in use. These are east-west elevators, again mirrored for different anatomical situations. These are used for roots on multi-rooted teeth. So here you see the principle on a lower molar where the two roots have been separated and the instrument are placed after one root is coming out the other root can be taken out by in this case a counterclockwise counterclockwise rotation of the instrument. Uh, the most used forceps for extractions of teeth in the maxilla. This one is called an MD1, mostly used for incisors and canines. This is the universal upper, which is called a 150. The European molar forceps, number 18. And this one has a right and left and we'll go into the details later. This one is an upper cow horn and again there is a right and a left. And this one is called a palmly or number 65 which is mostly used for upper incisors, roots and fragments in the whole maxilla. So this is the MD1 that is mostly used for upper incisors or canines and placed like this. 
The 150 is universal in the sense that it can be used in both the right side of the mouth and rotated 180 degrees also in the left side of the upper jaw. This is a European upper molar forceps. It has serrated jaws and this particular part here goes on the palatal root of the molar and this particular part of the jaws goes on the buccal. It has a notch in the middle of this jaw that goes in between the fication on the two buccal roots of the molars. Because of the curvature of the handle which is needed to get access to the tooth, this particular forceps is side specific. So there is a left side and a right side depending on which of the jaws that has that notch. The easiest way to find out which of the forceps are right and left is to place the instrument or hold it up in front of you with the notched uh, jaw on the buckle and then you can see from the curvature of the handle if it is a right or a left. In this case, this particular forceps is a left upper molar. This is an upper cow horn, number 89 or 90. The cow horn has a pointy jaw that goes in the focation between the two buccal roots of the upper molars and a curved jaw that goes on to the palatal root. Because of the curvature of the handle, again this forceps has a right and a left. The upper molar right is number 89 and the upper molar left is number 90. The cow horn is used when the crown is destroyed or broken or is likely to break because this forceps engages mostly on the palatal root and the buccal focation and doesn't lean so much on the crown itself as the previous upper molar European forceps. So these are the mostly used forceps for extraction of mandibular teeth. The universal lower the 151, the ash or 233 for lower incisors and very good for broken roots or root tips, the 13 euro style for incisors, canines and premolars, the 22 for mandibular molars, the 23 cow horn for mandibular molars with destroyed crowns and the 79 for wisdom teeth, lower wisdom teeth. So this is the 151, the universal lower forceps that can be used to extract virtually any mandibular teeth. Because of the angulation of the instrument though, extraction of especially posterior and especially wisdom teeth can be difficult because of the curvature of the instrument if the patient cannot open really wide. The ash or 233 forceps can be used for mandibular incisors and for root tips or roots in the mandible. The Euro style 13 with jaws that are curved on both sides with no notches. This forceps is for mandibular incisors, canines and premolars but not for mandibular molars. Where the Euro style 22 is used, the Euro style 22 has notches on both jaws 
that go in the buccal and lingual vocation of the mandibular molars. Because of the direction of the handle of the instruments, the Eurostyle 22 molar forceps may be difficult to use on wisdom teeth, which is where the 79 forceps comes in very useful. Because of the angulation of the beaks of the instrument, this instrument can be used to extract mandibular wisdom teeth without the necessity of the patient to open very wide. The last mandibular forceps is the cow horn or number 23 which just as in the maxilla is used in the fication. In this case though both in the buccal and lingual fication for that reason there is no left and right for, e for this instrument. The cow horn um, is used when the crown is destroyed and the instrument can engage in the fication and does not lean on the crown as the previous mandibular 22 or 79 forceps. This is the simple setup for extractions. And the cassette contains a needle holder in the lid, suction and the rubber for mounting the suction onto the unit, syringe, scissors, and the two straight elevators, the 304 the big one and the 301 the smaller elevator, and a bone file to smoothen sharp edges of bone after extraction. The surgical curette for removing cysts and other soft tissue after extraction. The root tip pick number one and the 13-14 root tip pick. The periosteal elevator and a mirror. This is the this kit for complex surgical extractions. It contains a lot of the same instruments as is available in the simple setup, but in addition to those instruments there are small and larger mouth props for children and adults, a surgical retractor, to retract soft tissue and a soft tissue flap, to the surgical retractor available in the surgical complex kit. We also have a retractor called Minnesota, which can be used both for flaps or to hold cheeks. A handle for a scalpel blade. The blade itself is not included in the kit. A hemostat for holding on to soft tissue, for removing soft tissue remnants after surgical extractions. And a rongeur for removal of sharp bony edges or recontouring as part of an alveoloplasty. This instrument is also quite useful for extracting small root tips or holding on to teeth after they're very loose just before removing them. And some 2x2 two two scores and a cup for sterile saline to use when drilling in teeth and or bone. And that concludes the review of instruments and forceps for all surgery. In a